Jack, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm not real familiar with NAD. I've, I've heard it as a uh, supplement to take to help maybe uh, reduce the, the chances of co uh, re contracting COVID or helping with the symptoms, but I, I hadn't heard about the, inter the IV version. And I'm wondering, as an oral supplement, uh, do you get the same results orally as you can with an IV? So, so the thing is, so the question is, you know, can we just take oral supplements of NAD instead of the IV? So, can everybody hear me, or is there some issue? Yeah, because I'm I can hear you. Feedback, Tanya, can you hear me? Okay. Uh huh. You're, you're perfect. I can hear you. Okay, cool. All right, listen. Um, so, what's the difference? So, in my opinion, again, we don't have as yet a commonly available way of measuring anybody's NAD levels. So we are just going by what makes sense. So when you take any kind of a supplement orally, there's a lot of issues with absorption. So we are kind of running blind. So I'm not sure about what we call the bioavailability, which means is everything that we are taking orally, how much of it is getting absorbed? You know, how much of it is actually being utilized? Right? That's the big question. When you do NAD IV directly, then you know that you're getting NAD where it needs to be. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no issues with absorption. And then obviously, if you want to put people on a maintenance program, you can go with any of the NAD supplements out there. You know, NMN, NR, and NAD. So there are a bunch of them available. So I tell people, listen, you need to fill up the gas tank that has been completely drained out with as much gasoline as possible, which is the NAD IV. And then, you know, to continue maintenance, you, you know, it's like putting in drops of gasoline into the gas tank as you continue to burn through it. So that's the difference between NAD uh, IV versus NAD oral. I'm, I'm sure this makes sense to a lot of folks, right? I mean, this is an issue that we see in medicine across the board uh, with issues with uh, absorption. Right. Okay. Thank like you. That. Hi, Paul. How are you? Paul? So Paul grabbed the mic. Yeah, um, I, I think with the thing with NAD, the half-life of it also, um, once you do the infusion, it, um, it, it doesn't stay in your system that long, depending... So usually for myself, I take NR so um, it so that it can convert into NAD, and I just take three and that that goes in and out of your body quick too. So I take three hundred milligram in the morning, and then late afternoon I'll take another three hundred milligram, and then that's it. I'm pretty good. But then every three to six months, if I if, it depends on how I feel. Again, it's all all the doctors tell me this depends on how on the patient and how they feel. Um, yeah. So I I can go one month without it and feel like I need it because I'm just had a lot of stress and a lot of things happening to me. And I, um, then I can go three or four months without it because I, I, I'm not that stressed out. Like, you know, I have my cortisol under, under control and I'm like in a better place and stuff like that. So it all depends what's going on. And it's, it also, it also depends what, what time of the year it is too, for me. Hi, hey, let Tanya. me explain to people about the NR stuff. Okay. So this well, is the bottom line. For NAD, NAD to be manufactured in our body, it starts with the, uh, the vitamin niacin. It has to go through several steps before it comes down to the NAD. NR is one of those intermediaries. NMN is one of those intermediaries. Okay, So when you're taking NR, NMN, you, the body still has to convert all that to NAD. You see? So once you've tuned up your body to its optimal function, then I'm sure the NR and the NMN and the NAD that you take is probably in a better place. That you can be more or less sure that you have the mechanism in place to convert all the substances into active NAD with the body. So initially, if you start off with IV NAD, I think you, you'll be in a much better position to make sure that whatever oral supplements that you take are more effective than than just taking an R and NMN with a body that's already ruined. I mean, you're not absorbing, you know, as well as you should. Your body is not up to par to kind of metabolize all that to the active form of NAD. So there's a lot of ifs, ands, and buts that, that happen with the oral supplement initially. 
you know, but once you tune the body up, then I think um, it's a reasonable way of kind of maintaining uh, the levels at, at some reasonable level. 